Hello, my name is Dara Murphy and my presentation today will be on Virtual Reality Gaming. I will be talking about how Virtual Reality Gaming affects the players from a good and bad points of view. The industry is one of the fastest developing in the world at the moment, so I found this a very interesting topic to learn more about. To begin with, I will give a quick overview of what I will be talking about in this presentation. I will begin with the technology available today to the gamers and give a little information about them. I will then go through the positive and negatives of virtual reality gaming and to finish I will give a brief statement of where I think technology and experiences will take us in the future. The HTC Vive was released in February 2016 and is proving to be a great success in the gaming industry. The headset is tethered to a computer and it has a 9.5 aspect ratio with 360 degree view. This gives the players a beautiful clear image of the game they are playing. The player is tracked using laser positioning, a gyro sensor and an accelerometer. In the HD Vive there are a total of 70 sensors between the two, between the two pressure sensitive controllers which also have a trackpad. Infrared lighthouse cameras track the player's movements across the designated space and it does not miss a beat. The technology is truly top of the range and is developing at a very fast pace. The PlayStation VR is another one of the virtual reality headsets to only be released recently in October 2016. Again the headset has 360 degree vision with a 5.7 OLED screen and 3D audio for the extra immersive experience. 3D audio really does clarify all sounds that surrounds the players making the experience all that better. The players are tracked using the PlayStation camera which have 9 LEDs in the front, back and sides. The players control their experience using DualShock 4 controllers which are also wireless. For this being PlayStation's first crack at virtual reality, it's really a, it really does provide a top class experience. The Oculus Rift would probably be the best known of the virtual reality headsets on the market today. It was released in March 2016 and again has a 360 degree vision with 1920 by 1080 HD resolution. A 10 foot cable is tethered from the headset to the computer which allows for a very solid connection between the boat. A non-disruptive connection is crucial to players to avoid dizziness and other annoyances. Little microphone poles are used to track the player's movements. These were designed very cleverly as they fit into your surroundings such as a table or a desk. The Oculus Rift also has a HDRF functioned wireless touch controllers. Oculus also have a very exciting partnership with Microsoft which means in the future we may be able to play 2D games on the 3D platform. I will now give a look at the brighter side of virtual reality and what it has to offer us as gamers. There are different aspects to virtual reality gaming and not all are about gaming for say. It can be just about the experience the players get from the game, but not necessarily playing a fast paced thriller, but sitting back and experiencing something that can change your perspective on the world of VR gaming. Here we have the Apollo 11 virtual reality experience. This unique gaming experience takes the players back to the first moonwalk with original audio and film clips used. The players can experience exactly what went on the day right from the comfort of their living room. Next we have Brave Mind, the rehabilitation shooting game for soldiers in aiding them to recover from PTSD. The virtual game slowly introduces the players into stressful situations under the guidance of a counsellor. Brave Mind is proving to be a great success and is really helping soldiers recover from PTSD. Next we have the educational side of VR gaming and flight simulation. Pilots and trainers can learn exactly how to fly a plane using the Oculus Rift, all in the safe and stable environment. Flight simulators have been around for years now, but with the introduction of virtual reality, it really is taking the experience to the next level. And lastly, it's just all about enjoying the VR gaming experience. Games such as Job Simulator, Super Hot VR, and VR Funhouse are really enjoyable games to play and really promote what virtual reality is all about. The immersive gaming experience in a fun and aesthetically pleasing environment. These games keep virtual reality simple but are still very enjoyable to play. Now looking at the darker side of virtual reality gaming. Some games on the market for different platforms of virtual reality can leave a person haunted for days after the immersive experience while other games have much more going on in them that the players actually feel sick after they play them. Battlezone VR is a game where players are seated in this gunship machine where they are constantly shooting and sometimes spinning. 
As the players must avoid being shot in and destroyed their opponents, the game is very fast paced. The creators of the game receive quite a lot of complaints that their regular surface and fast paced action made them very nauseous and it found it very overwhelming. A chair in a room is one of the most scariest VR games on the market at the moment. The players are immersed in an environment of family abuse, drug abuse and Minton Hill stories. Surrounded by dark and dreary environments, the players are constantly kept on their toes and a jump scare is never far away. Does this game go too far though? With players saying the experience remained with them for days. There can be some very real side effects to the use of virtual reality. Some games can cause nausea to players and excessive use of virtual reality can lead to eye strain and headaches. It is recommended that a 10 minute break is taken every half hour. Unknown health conditions can also be exposed to people while playing while playing virtual reality, such as heart conditions and sensitivity to adrenaline. So what do the experts think about virtual reality game? Professor Bailison says, we shouldn't fathom this as an immediate experience, we should fathom it as an experience. And Alex Swart says, we have to be very careful, scares in VR are borderline immoral. He is very right, I think there should be limits or at least clear warnings to players to be prepared. Brendan Irib says, there's going to be a lot of content that you're only going to want to watch on a screen. You're not going to want to be necessarily in a car chase in VR. That's too much motion. He also has a great point. Like I've mentioned, too much motion can have bad effects on the players. In conclusion, I think virtual reality gaming is an absolutely fascinating sector to be involved in. The developments being made and how fast they're being made is truly amazing. New features for VR gaming are constantly being developed. I do think though that limits need to be put on games, especially in the very immersive horror sector. In the future, who knows what's achievable in VR gaming. Games that adapt to know what to scare you and didn't scare you are just a tipping point of what I think can be achievable. Thank you.